Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we are continuing our Marvel Tsunami Venom coverage. We already talked about Shiver, we talked about Run, we built up this great mystery, who's the new Venom, where does he come from, how does Bob fit into it, who's the mysterious Bob in general, uh, who are Frankie and Vic, how are they important to Bob, uh, why does he keep cloning them and, and keeping them separate from each other, uh, Patricia Robertson, where does her journey begin, and where is it going to go from here, and obviously who is the suit, and what alien race is he a part of, and what is his ultimate mission, and who reprogrammed him to send them after the symbiote to help mankind. So there's a lot of questions we have and today we're going to get some of those answers as we talk about patterns. This book starts off two years prior to the story we've known so far. So two years ago Eddie Brock Venom, we actually get to see him finally in this book. It, it took 11 issues to get to Eddie Brock, but obviously, you know, Daniel Way, who was writing this, he knew that people wanted to see Eddie, they wanted to get answers, and so he was like, all right, I'm ready to give them to you. We spent almost a year now, 10 issues, talking, you know, setting all this up. So now it's time you guys get answers. So Patterns is just a little three-part story in the middle of this run, uh, right before the conclusion, which we'll talk about in the next episode. And in this one, Daniel Way brings back artist Francisco Herrera, so it was kind of cool to see him again, and then also introduced me to someone who would eventually become a friend uh, in many ways, which is Sean Cheeks Galloway, a very talented artist, and he actually drew one of these issues, or at least part of one, and that was my first introduction to him and when I became a big fan of his uh, around this time in 2003-2004. So um, yeah, so this book starts off, and it's two years ago, and it's Eddie Brock Venom fighting Spider-Man and beating him. Uh, and so he's standing over, you know, Peter and he's like, you know, I could destroy you right now, but I don't want you to die a hero. I'm going to ruin your life. I'm going to do what you did to me. I'm going to, you know, smear your name everywhere and just make sure everyone hates you. And then at that point, when you're at your lowest, I'll kill you. Uh, and so as he's getting ready to leave, you know, a, a broken Spider-Man on the ground, unconscious, uh, the Fantastic Four show up and you actually get to see the thing fight Venom. And it's pretty cool. And you could just tell that Daniel Way was like, look, if I'm going to write a Venom story, I want to involve the Marvel Universe. And that's why I like this run so much, is Venom, even though it's a different Venom, it very much is involved in a lot of the things that are in the Marvel Universe. And you're like, well, if there was a, a Venom being created by a secret organization, wouldn't S.H.I.E.L.D. be onto it? And wouldn't somehow Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four get involved? And the cool thing is, is Daniel Wade does all of that. And that's why I really like this run. So, uh, so you know, you have the Fantastic Four show up, the thing is fighting Venom. And Venom can't beat him. It's a giant rock monster. So what he decides to do is he, he has like a, a symbiote push out of his back and plant him against the wall. And he pushes all of his weight on uh, the thing. And he's holding him. And Venom shoves his tongue into the thing's mouth to try to choke him, uh, you know, basically. So he's shoving the symbiote, like it's a tongue with symbiote strands on it. And it's in uh, Ben Grimm's mouth. And he can't breathe. And so he's just shoving it, you know, further and further. So it's like really, really gross and intense. Uh, but Venom's like, hey, this is the only weapon I have against this giant rock monster. But then Human Torch flies by and burns Eddie Brock and actually burns the tongue right off. And we talk about that all the time, or at least a couple times on this show, which is, uh, you know, whenever Spider-Man and, and Eddie get into a battle, sometimes Mark Bagley would have, like, Spider-Man uppercut Eddie and make him bite off his own tongue. And what's cool is that they kind of use that trope here, and the Human Torch burns off the tongue. And so, you know, Ben Grimm is over, you know, in the alley, like, that they're fighting, and he's trying to cough up the tongue and throw it up. Uh, so it's, like, working its way down into a stone. And then meanwhile, Reed Richards shows up, he shoots, uh, you know, the Venom or Eddie Brock with a, like a new weapon he made and it sends like a pulse through Venom and it separates the suit from Eddie Brock in just one blast. Uh, and then Sue Storm, uh, she actually uses her powers uh, and she, she, you know, creates force fields around Eddie and around the symbiote and keeps them separate. So just in like five pages, the Fantastic Four come in, save Spider-Man and take down Venom. And it was pretty cool. I actually really like this battle. Because, uh, you know, Venom was completely caught off guard by it. He had no idea he was going to get jumped by the Fantastic Four. Uh, so that kind of starts off the book. And then from there, we get into, like, the actual background of some of the other characters. We learn a little bit more about Bob. You know, he's in New York. He hears about this, you know, this event that happened with the symbiote. And he starts sending his agents, you know, Vic and Frankie, out to go find out some more information. And it's around this time that some random kid finds the tongue, because uh, Ben Grimm has thrown up the tongue now and left it in the alley. They grab Spider-Man and they grab Venom and Eddie Brock, and they go off back to Four Freedoms Tower, or the Baxter building, and they go back there to, you know, like, heal Spider-Man and then turn Venom over to S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so as they leave, 
this kid who was nearby watched the fight happen, he finds the tongue. And he ends up quitting his job because he's like, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money off this. And he goes home, he tells his girlfriend about it, and she's like, you're a psycho. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, trust me, I'm going to put it on eBay. We're going to sell it right now. He puts it on eBay, and within seconds, Bob finds out about the listing on eBay because he's connected to everything because we're going to learn more about what Bob is very soon. And, uh, and he sends uh, Vic and Frankie there, and they blow up this kid's apartment, and they take the tongue and bring it back to Bob. And it's really neat how they, they transfer it. I think it was really cool how Daniel Way set this scene up. It has, like, a, one Vic and Frankie, and they, you know, grab the tongue, and they get in the helicopter, and they bring it to a location. They drop a crate down, and then at that location, a different Vic and Frankie, who never see the first Vic and Frankie, pick the crate up, put it on their plane, fly it to New Mexico, and that's where Bob is. And then they drop it off uh, in New Mexico uh, from the air. You know, they just drop it in by parachute. And then another Vic and Frankie pick it up and bring it to the facility that Bob's at. So this is how secretive Bob is. He doesn't even have his Vic and Frankies, you know, around each other. And clearly they're two important women or two people he trusted, and he decided to clone a bunch of them. Uh, kind of like, it reminded me of the Umbrella Corporation in the Resident Evil movies. I know I always bring them up when I talk about Venom, uh, but it reminded me of the Umbrella Corporation, how they cloned a bunch of Alice's because they were like, oh, she's good at this and good at this. So we're just going to keep cloning Alice's and use them over and over. And that's kind of what Bob is doing. He's using these Vic and Frankie's over and over to do his bidding. And from all these, you know, Vic and Frankie's going from one location to the other, what we learn is that there's actually two Bobs. There's a Bob in New York, you know, uh, being there. He's been researching the symbiote and Venom for a while now, uh, ever since, you know, Eddie Brock has been in New York and when he first appeared. So he's kind of taken a distant approach uh, watching him and waiting for the right time to get like a sample of him. And uh, now he's got the opportunity. And then when he calls New Mexico, there's a secret base there and there's another Bob that answers the phone. And the Bob in, uh, in in New Mexico is a scientist Bob and the one in New York is like a business Bob so one's wearing a black suit and the other one's wearing a lab coat and this is important because you're going to see that there's a shift there they use that as a visual thing to set something up later which I really like again that Francisco and uh, and Daniel Way did I think they work really well together on this book and so um so there's all these like little subtle visual things and what happens is you know uh, Bob is talking to the other Bob and he says look uh, you know get you know tell me when you get the sample in the tongue's coming once you learn from it you know feedback to me and let me know what's going on and the other Bob's like of course Bob you know and they they end their transmission uh, and then we cut back to the Baxter building where uh, Peter Parker wakes up and he talks to Reed Richards. He's like, hey, thanks for healing me. I feel pretty good. I appreciate you guys looking out for me. And I appreciate you guys holding Venom until S.H.I.E.L.D. can come take care of him. Um, but, you know, so I'll just leave you to it. And then Reed is like, hey, one second, Peter. He's like, I know you're kind of a science whiz and you might appreciate this. So let me show you something. And he brings Peter into this, you know, room and he's like, this is a secret project I've been working on. And he goes, and uh, I'm, I'm actually using it to communicate or in my next phase of studying the symbiote because you know Ben Grimm wanted us to destroy Venom once and for all and kind of Human Torch did too but I think we can learn something from this species he goes so I want to study it more but it won't let me anywhere near it he goes but on one of our recent expeditions where we went to another planet I found this little tiny nanobot and of course we know that nanobot as what will become uh, the suit the guy at you know the suit so he's like I have this little nanobot and he goes and the weird thing is is they're very utilitarian like they build constantly they keep rebuilding themselves so I had one bot and now I have like 20 bots and uh, they have a very interest you know they have a deep interest in the symbiote and I don't know if they want to study it or destroy it uh, but they keep being drawn to it so every time you know I, I have you know, now that we have Eddie here, ever since he showed up, uh, these little nanobots have been acting like crazy trying to get to it. He's like, so I'm slowly putting them into the chamber with the symbiote to poke and prod it and study it and try to get a sample for me. Um, but the symbiote has been defensive, obviously, and the robots are, you know, they're, they're, it's more strength than numbers. So they're kind of retreating because there's only like 20 of them. So he's showing this all to Peter Parker and Peter Parker's like, wait, so these things might have an affinity to want to destroy the symbiote. And, and uh, you know, Reed's like, yeah, and that's why I can't leave him alone for too long. Now we cut to about five months later. So it's about 19 months prior to the story that we currently know is happening in the books. Uh, where Patricia Robertson is the new Venom and she's like wandered off into the wilderness. So this is 19 months before that and uh, five months after the, you know, the first issue of Patterns. 
and in this we're kind of caught up now on what's going on with the, the tongue sample in New Mexico. And so there's a Bob down there with a Vic and Frankie, and they are just studying this thing like nonstop. And what they notice is that every time they put a potential host in the room with it, the, the, the alien suit just kills it immediately. So from the tongue, they were able to extract and build a whole new venom, essentially, from this one you know tongue sample. And uh, it is out of control, and it is just killing hosts. It's not even feeding off most of them. So there were times in the earlier books where I was like, oh, I wish they would show some of the people being drained because that's what they say that it does. It's jumping from host to host and draining them. But th it actually looks like it's not just draining people. It is just randomly killing them too. So, you know, I, did, I overlooked that my first time reading through this. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I, I thought that was just supposed to drain everybody. But here, this thing is literally out of control. It is a maniac. It is killing anything that it can, you know, kill. So um, it's pretty neat. And so, uh, so they're studying it. And they're like, yeah, every time we put a host in a room with it, it just kills the host. So Bob's like, well, what if we put two potential hosts in a room do you think it'll choose and actually bond with somebody and they're like i don't know but you know should we try it and he's like yeah let's try it right now i'll watch so they're like okay and so vic and frankie these vic and frankie they're scientists they're not even like super agents or anything like that these two are just super smart and they're working in this lab so they're like well you know what's going on with bob why is he so adamant about stuff and you know frankie's like yeah look he's been studying this thing for years and he just knows he knows stuff like he's really smart so uh let's just try this and put two hosts in so they have one like guy from prison he was like bob was like yeah i got this guy out of the penitentiary system and then there's a like a, a psych ward a patient like an elderly guy um who just doesn't have all of his you know facilities about him so they're both in the room together and uh the the criminal guy is like hey come on man you know snap out of it what's going on here why are we here and then the suit gets released and it sees two potential hosts so what it does is it comes at them and it touches uh, briefly the prisoner guy but he starts fighting back and he's like no man you know i'm tough i'm not gonna let anyone hurt me ever again and then the suit disappears and you're like what happened and then the old man who was just mumbling before kind of turns and looks at the criminal and he's like He's like, yeah, you are tough. He's like, you fought before. He's like, remember that time in the library in prison when you fought four guys? He goes, but there was just too many of them, and they held you down, and they did something against your will. And, and the guy's like, shut up, man, shut up. Don't don't tell that story. How do you know that? How do you know that? And then the guy turns into venom uh, and then eats, you know, the uh, the other, you know, the, the criminal, basically. And the elderly guy is the host, uh, but only for 23 seconds because that's all, the, you know, that he had in him to keep the suit going. So then the suit had to detach from him. Um, and that's, you know, once again, Bob and Vic and Frankie are studying this and are like, whoa. So he only used the host for 23 seconds. Uh, so he doesn't even stay with people that long. I know it's an elderly guy, but still, if we do the math, he probably is only with like a younger person for a couple minutes. Uh, but then he also transmitted memories by touching the criminal. He could see like, you know, something from his past. And obviously we know this is the case because Venom transferred Peter Parker's memories to Eddie Brock. Uh, and it also has genetic memories now in the comic books where it's having nightmares from a past life. So there's all these interesting things. So it's, it's, Again, keeping with the continuity of the of the suit and what it's you know capable of, uh, but so yeah, so now that Bob has seen this, he's happy and he's like, you know what, we're moving on to the next phase. So Bob shuts down this lab and he you know tells Vic and Frankie like, look, I'll come back to you when I need more work from you, but for now, like go home, just you know be normal people, I guess, and I'm gonna go you know and deal with this you know situation um, and uh, and and move to the next phase. And they're like okay so then he you know he contacts one bob in new mexico he contacts the bob in new york and the guy in new york the bob there is like all right look um so i'm sending a scientist he's like i found this military base or this i found this base in the arctic um that's secluded it's perfect for what we need and basically all our research is done like we're just going to send this suit there we're going to create a fake file and it's going to be the master file and every scientist we put on this project is going to be dealing with disinformation uh incomplete files incomplete dna strands and everything like that they're never going to be able to crack what this uh alien suit can do and we don't want them to we, any further testing could disrupt our ultimate plan so what we're going to do is we're going to send it up there and basically it's going to be babysat by these researchers but they're not going to know they're babysitters so uh that's what that's the next plan and he goes but one of them is coming now his name is Mr. Uh, dr perry and that is obviously the perry we know from patricia that's the one she finds in the meat locker in the first uh run of this book which is shiver so uh so they're setting up perry already and it's pretty neat so he shows up but bob in new york is like hey look he's expecting me bob in my suit 
not Bob you in a lab coat. Uh, so you need to change right now. And so Bob in New Mexico is like, no problem. And then you see all the spider nanobots come out of them and change the white lab coat into a black suit. And you see now that Bob is of the same race as the suit. And now that Reed Richards has had time to study Venom and look at the symbiote and study Eddie Brock and keep them separated for a few months, now Nick Fury has shown up and is like, all right, we've secured a location for him at the vault. We're going to, you know, take Eddie Brock there. And uh, we also have some things we want to work on as well. And at the same time, when Nick Fury shows up, he sees the little nanobots. And now there's like 60 of them. And they're, you know, probing and, and working on the symbiote. And, and you know, Nick Fury's like, what are those? And, uh, you know, Reed goes, oh, that's something that was on one of my ships, uh, on our ship, on one of our excavations. You know, he tells the same story he told to Peter Parker. And Nick Fury's like, okay, sure. And he's like, um, all right, well, like, you know, we'll take Eddie Brock now. So, uh, so Reed's like, yeah, fine. He's like, I guess I learned everything I could. And maybe you know, Ben Grimm was right. Maybe we should just destroy this thing. And Nick Fury's like, I'll be the judge of that. So he takes, you know, Venom and Eddie Brock and they leave to head to the vault. And meanwhile, as, you know, Nick Fury's leaving, someone says, so was it a good extraction? He goes, yeah, easy extraction. He looks down at his finger and there's a nanobot on his, on his, on his finger. And he's basically stole one from Reed Richards. And now in the final issue of Patterns, it takes place one month ago. So now another 18 months have passed and we are one month prior to current events. So when the next arc starts, this is a month before that. And we're going back to the Ararat Research Facility in the Arctic. And it starts off with the scientists that were picked by Bob to babysit the symbiote, even though they weren't told they were babysitters. They, told, they were told to work on it uh, to an extent, but given all, so much disinformation that they can't actually make any progress, they start to realize that. Two of these scientists are talking and going, wait a minute, we don't have the right information and this DNA strand isn't complete and they're starting to figure everything out. And so uh, one of them's like, you know what we need? We need an actual tissue sample. We need something to help us, you know, move this. Look, we're not babysitters. We need to move forward with the next phase. And so let's, you know, on our next conference call with Bob, let's tell him about it. So soon after they have their conference call with Bob and, you know, we see Bob now in his suit and he's like, what's going on? And they're like, yeah, well, you know, we have a problem here. We can't move forward. So we need a tissue sample to move forward. And Bob's like, you know, I've been anticipating this day. And I guess you guys have had that suit for 18 months now and you've done the best you can. Uh, so you know what? You're right. I guess it is about time to put our final you know, plan into play. He goes, so tell you what, your tissue sample's on the way. And he presses a button and he releases the symbiote. So now Venom, you know, in the lab is let loose. And he comes into the room and just starts killing all the scientists. So this is literally the events leading right up to when Patricia finds everybody. And they're getting decimated in there. And some of them run into the kitchen and they lock themselves in and barricade themselves in. And then, of course, there's the kitchen and then there's that meat locker that Perry ends up in. And Perry's like, look, let's go in there. It, it can't handle the cold. Um, you know, let's hide in there for a while. And they're like, yeah, but if we go in there, it'll just wait us out because we're just going to freeze to death in there. Uh, so it's a dumb plan. And he's like, well, either freeze to death or get eaten by that thing. Like, what do you want? And so they're all sitting there debating it, trying to think about it. And of course, without even waiting for another second, Perry decides, screw it. I'm just going in. So he runs in there and locks himself in. And, uh, and it's just like, all right, you guys are all left, you know, with the creature. So the Venom suit breaks in and just starts devouring everyone. And then meanwhile, Nick Fury, you know, he's working on his top secret project. It's been 18 months now for him too, obviously. And the little nanobots, he's been able to turn one of them, unlike Reed Richards, who had maybe like 60 nanobots, he was able to turn them into hundreds and actually create the suit. You know, he had a researcher uh, specifically working on it and helping the robots duplicate themselves. So now we have the guy, the suit, you know, um, who, who helps Patricia in the first two books. And and uh, Nick Fury puts a set of sunglasses on him and then he like shoots him a couple times and the holes go through and then they heal up and, and you know and basically he's like all right test over he's like we need to send this guy in the field now because I just learned about this research base it just got you know like something broke out there I've been keeping an eye on it and uh, you know now that it's you know we have a, a possible uh, scenario on our hands like we need to deal with it and then you know he's like well how how'd you find out about this place and Nick's like I just found out about it recently because the nanobots told me like they've been communicating with Nick Fury and updating him through their phone and apparently they know what Bob you know, they're learning what Bob knows. 
So, so Nick Fury is like, all right, we need to go to the Arctic and send the suit. And, and the researcher is like, why him? Like, don't you have the Avengers and stuff? And he goes, I can't send human hosts after this thing because if it bonds with them, you know, it could ca cause a catastrophe and it could accelerate this Bob guy's plans or whoever's behind this is plans. He doesn't know fully that it's Bob yet, but he's like, I, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to feed into what our enemy wants. So I'm going to use this, you know, this alien race of robots that is sent here to destroy any like extreme versions of this you know race this alien race so we're going to send the suit in so that's when the suit gets deployed uh with nick fury flying overhead and drops the suit right into the action and of course he's a little off course when he lands because he jumps out without a parachute or anything uh, and he lands and he's like all right i'm still like a few miles out i'll get there as fast as i can and nick fury's like hustle dude like go then we cut back down to you know the, the massacre of all the scientists in the kitchen and venom is outside the you know the meat locker and he's taunting perry and he's like come on perry let me in and of course perry's like no like you know get away from me and uh, he's like ah don't worry perry he's like i'm gonna let you live he's like i i need someone i need a host to get out of here on and i think you're the perfect match and then that's when he hears something through the intercom uh, hey guys i have your videotapes i want to return them and boom, right there, we are at the start of Shiver with Patricia Robertson outside, you know, talking on the intercom going, hey guys, it's cold out here, like, let me in, I have your DVDs. And Venom kind of turns and smiles and goes, <laughs> and he walks up to the intercom and he's like, help, help. And so you learn, obviously, that the suit, uh, the alien suit is the one that lured her into the building. And that is where Patterns ends. So yeah, pretty crazy. A lot of information and just three issues. You know, I mean, so much information that this episode's as long as the other episodes. And there was actually less content to talk about, but they're just so dense with information. I mean, we learned now Bob is the same alien race as the suit. The suit is a good version uh, built by Nick Fury and kind of, you know, led to, you know, destroy the symbiote. And Bob wants to use this extreme version of the symbiote to cause like a global epidemic have it feed and kill everything on earth and he has a very specific plan and we're going to learn a little bit more about that in the next storyline called twist which is the ending of all this uh, but for this one i thought it was really good i thought i actually like patterns a lot and i liked seeing sean galloway come in i mean like i said this is my first exposure to him and his style is a little different than francisco and paco medina but he came in on this last issue and, and uh, filled in as the fill-in artist on some of the pages and i liked his stuff and ever since then i've been following the guy's career all the way to spectacular spider-man the cartoon where he was one of the head designers and all the way to his current stuff where he's doing like a batman the animated series trading card game um, and then all the stuff he does with table taffy which is his company and ryan benjamin and uh he also worked he did a cover for my comic book called soul star uh so i mean this guy became a friend and he's really awesome and hopefully one day i'll be able to get him on the show uh, to talk to you guys about venom and uh you know the spectacular spider-man cartoon that he worked on uh but for today you know let me know what you guys think of patterns i like this book a lot this is where it really hooked me where i was like all right we got 10 issues in and now we got three issues of answers and the mystery and the intrigue just amplified i thought all the answers that i got at least were intriguing enough to want to keep reading the book and i was like all right i'm on board i know we don't it's not eddie brock it's a different you know suit altogether but this is really interesting and it's one of the more interesting things they did with venom around this time now granted when he becomes part of matt gargan and matt gargan joins the thunderbolts and the dark avengers and then we get agent venom all that stuff is way better in a lot of ways um so if you read those first before you read this this probably doesn't hold up but at the time when it was Spider-Man the next chapter and we were getting the Eddie Brock stuff and then Anne Wang's death and all that I just really wasn't a big fan of and what they did with Eddie in that run. So this followed that and this made me really into it. And we even get a hint at Eddie Brock possibly having cancer in this one when uh, when Reed Richards tells Nick Fury, hey, I noticed there's an like a, a abnormality in his brain or, or not his brain. But yeah, I think it was his brain or somewhere. He's like, I noticed an abnormality in him and it, it could be cancer. He's like, I don't know for sure. It, it's too soon to tell. Um, but you know, the, the suit seems to be feeding off of it. And, uh, Nick Fury's like, yeah, that's very fascinating. Like I'm going to just put him on my ship and I'm going to take him out of here. So even get that little setup because after this run, we talk about Venom, the hunger in spectacular Spider-Man. And that takes place right after this. And we do learn about Eddie Brock having cancer. So it, you see that it was detected 19 months ago in the current storyline, uh, when Reed Richards talked about it in issue two of this run. So a lot of cool things happened in this book and a lot of cool answers came out of this, but not all of them. So we still got one more battle left and that is the new venom versus the old venom versus spider-man and that's going to be coming up in the next run called twist 
So make sure you stay subscribed so you tune in for that and you don't miss that episode. That'll be coming up tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. Let me know what you think of this. If you read this book, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this story. And if you haven't read it and you stuck around through the spoilers, you know, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions that I can answer, anything I maybe didn't cover, I will cover it down below for you guys. Thanks so much for watching my show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.